everybody. I'm Aggie. Hi, I'm Shelly. <laughs> we are so happy to be here tonight. Happy Tuesday. It's another watercolor night, Tuesday Night Live with Aggie and Shelly. So I'm Agnes Friedlander, and you can follow me on Facebook, Agnes Friedlander Art Studio. And Shelly, you can follow where, Shelly? Shelly Parker Design, and I'm all over the painter's journey. So <laughs> go, go to thepaintersjourney.com, follow our YouTube channel here. If you're here, I hope you're following us here. So we always have lots yes. of cool stuff. Hi, Lucas. Yeah, we have lots of good stuff. And um, Shelly brought up a good point. You know, if you if you check us out on the paintersjourney.com website, um, which the Tuesday Night Live tab has this whole series, this watercolor pumpkin series downloads are going to still be available through next Tuesday. And then they're going away. So if you want to get the supply list for watercolors, all the tracers that we've shared with you, and what else did we share in there? I think I shared this document that shows you. Um, yeah, the triads. Yeah, let me let me grab it real quick. So there's this tracer that Shelly shared. There's this, you know, um, painting in watercolors cards. How to how to uh, how to make little pumpkin cards and uh, there's also a little sheet like this that you can use to swatch out your watercolors and also this sheet with the triads you know and oh here is the a little color wheel study you can do all kinds of stuff so you know it's worth grabbing before it goes away just thought we'd mention that right yeah, so we'll we'll leave our um, all of the resources for this up as as long as we're doing this series. And next month, when we start a new series, we may do another PDF. We'll, we'll decide next month as as we. PDFs. Yeah, I think the PDFs are nice. We did we painted these tr trees, and I told you about my secret tool for getting them to look like this. I just this. If you know what the secret tool is, type it in the comments. If you know what the secret tool is, type it in the comments and I'll send you a few. Yeah? Oh my goodness, aren't you nice, Shelly? I have a I have I don't have the 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 nice big ones, but I Liz got a few of them in an order that I sent her. So Oh, nice, nice, nice. And yeah. then I bought I got I sent one of these to Shelly. This is so nice. Um, these, this is just a set of Windsor and Newton fine liners. Didn't you like these, Shelly? Did oh you? Oh my use gosh, them? I love these. Oh, it's, it looks God. like watercolor, you know, and it just it'll blend right in with your painting. Yeah, I, I love this super. It's got a really long nib. Yeah, I love this super long nib. It just is, it's comfortable in your hand when you when you go to write with them. And if you get the set, there are three different um, weights. Three smell? different. <laughs> Somehow I got a whiff of them. They actually smell good. <laughs> I'm weird. <laughs> I love the smell of paints. So if you've got questions on watercolor supplies or watercolor paints, brushes, throw your questions at us. We want to talk about watercolor. We want to. Shopping for a brush. oh okay. It says I'm shopping for a brush for fine hairs. What do you mean by that for fine hairs? Do you mean a script liner, Liz? So I have this zero mm -hmm. that I really like. That's nice. Who's that by? This is an Arteza one, I think. Yeah, um, Artegrio or. Artegrio. Okay. And oh. a pinch. ding a chipmunk. This is going to be the best comment ever. I love it. Ding a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> chipmunk. 
Um, okay, that didn't make it much better list. <laughs> then here's just, I think any any kind of a, you know, Aggie has talked about the, the script liners. The nice thing about these is the long bristle that they have. You get, it really holds a lot of paint. Oh, you're doing a chipmunk, okay. <laughs> that is a really, what brand, that's the really, really good one. That, yeah, that so, one. you know. I mean, it's probably good for watercolor too. Yeah, this is actually a watercolor brush. It's, it is? Okay. It's a, it's, it's from, it's from this, this lady that I love to watch watercolor on YouTube. Okay. Um, but she has her own set of brushes and they're great brushes. Oh, okay. So, um, this Looks is like from, Princeton Select. What's up? It looked like a Princeton Select, um, yeah. liner brush, which mm -hmm. I love those. Those are good liner brushes. This one it's is color, you know. I think if you look up Remember Joy on Facebook, I mean, I'm sorry, on Amazon, you can find her brushes. What's her name? The the name of I don't I can't remember her name, but the the name of her her line is called Remember Joy. Oh, okay. She has a whole set. Joy. Or you know, I've noticed at Hobby Lobby. I, I don't know if you're talking about watercolors, Liz. Probably. Hobby Lobby, I think they still have Princeton Velvet Touch. Mm. And these are really great for watercolor and they have every size, you know. You just want to remember, I mean, uh, with watercolor even more, it's it's still important in acrylics, but with watercolor, just, you know, those brushes that really hold a lot of water and hold a lot of, of pigment really, really help. I'm This brush is a size yeah. 12. And on the pumpkin painting that we are doing, I'm just love, 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 loving this size 12 brush. And you would look at it and think, oh my gosh, it's too big for the painting that we're doing, even this nine by 12 that we're doing. Let me see the one you're using. That um, one? Yeah, this is this is another Artegria. Um, okay. And it's all wet because I've had it. It looks about the size of this one. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, just, you know, it comes to such a fine point. You can really do some fine details still. Yeah. Um, great brushes. It's fun to kind of, it is a whole different beast. It's fun to work with them because, um, you know, watercolors are completely, I mean, you know, not completely different, but quite different from the acrylics that we normally work with. And I've been painting all day with acrylics while Lucy Laser has been working. So I'm moving okay. my, I'm gonna try my to camera to point down on what we've got going on here. I'll try to point down to mine too. I have to turn the lights down in my studio when I'm on live. So it's a little bit harder to paint when the lights are all down, but. Yeah, why do you have to turn the lights down? Because it looks so blown out and oh, yeah. okay. if I have it too light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to do stuff in weird places that I don't like because of the this can I mean I love this this piece of equipment. This it's called a canvas. I don't know why they call it canvas. It's the dumbest name. It's kind oh, of dumbest name. It. <laughs> I forget that we're live on we're on a <laughs> thing on YouTube here. <laughs> I shouldn't be so. It is weird though why they you know call it a call it an art light or something. Yeah. So this was it finally dried. Now last week, you know, this was really wet and I don't know, I really like it. Isn't it so fun how you want to paint over over any of that part. Yeah, you shouldn't. Sometimes Oh, Shelly, yours looks so awesome. Sometimes, I mean, you know, that really has such nice form, especially that one front piece. It's really well described. It's really got a lot of great form to it. And, you know, we were, Shelly and I were talking about that a little bit today, um, like, like a level, like a, level one artist like what are the things that we teach in the membership for you know when you first enter into being an artist and and 
just kind of <laughs> what are all the things, right? Yeah. Do you ever just stop and think about all that stuff? Oh it's, my god. It's so fun. it's fun when you really when you really dive into the your art and dive into your painting to see some of the, the things that you begin to pay attention to and the things that you um, start to know more about I'm trying to still get my right so we're talking a little bit about like even in doing these watercolors we're talking about basic observation and noticing shapes and simple forms and that's what's so great about pumpkins it's a simple form you know with these sections that have light and shadow areas to them. Hey, Lynn, thanks for joining us. Trying to get my cord out of the way and it's not wanting to behave. Um, a lot of what we talk about in The Painter's Journey is a limited color palette. We talk about basic color mixing. Um, we talk about, um, you know, we're, we're using primary colors, how to mix those together, because when you mix them in a certain way, it desaturates them and makes them into muted colors, also known as grays, uh, which are more realistic. Like when we look out into the world at all the different colors that we see, we don't see the paint tube colors that we've got in our in our paint tubes, right? <laughs> I think that that's, you know, I'm often thinking about um, toning down colors using the... Um, using the complements of the color to make it not so primary. Um, yeah. Exactly. And that's um, called desaturating. Yeah. When you do that, it, it, you know, I mean, it sounds fancy, but you're desaturating the color. So it's not so um, pigmented. It's not, it's not like right out of the tube. And, and that's what's nice about pumpkins. Fall is the perfect time to do art that depicts desaturated art, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and there's just something about it. When we did the triad study that night, um, let me go grab that. Oh, yeah. So, like, these are all pure saturated colors that I'm showing on the right half of the screen. Um, <clears throat> but I did use mixes from my watercolor tube colors that I have for the in-between ones. So this was right out of the tube, this yellow, this Scarlet Lake was right out of the tube, and this ultramarine blue was directly out of the tube. But the colors in between I mixed, and and I was able to get it to really work, you know, from yellow to um, yellow, orange, 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 red. Well, maybe that's not quite orange, red. It's kind of orange. Mm -hmm. Here's a, here's a pure orange, here's an orange red, here's red, here's red violet. You say the primary color first, did you know that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this one, it's got red and violet in it, you say red violet, and then we've got, um, actually wait, this is really red violet. <laughs> well, no, this is magenta technically, but they're kind of the same thing. Yeah, they're close. Blue violet, blue, uh, blue green, I would say blue first because blue is a primary, green is a secondary. And then we just go into more yellow greens, you know, green, yellow greens. It's like almost these two look the same and these two look the same, but they are subtly different. In person, you can see it a little bit better. Actually, this is probably where I did the worst. These two look almost exactly the same, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, and again, when the when the paints dry, it, you know, it kind of gives a different you know, they, they, it looks different. It looks completely yeah. different when it. So we took some primaries here. This is just called a triad study. Any yellow, any blue, and any red. Paint them in a circle and then make them blend together. That's all this is. And look how cool it is. Um, and then here is a different set of primaries. This one is Quinacridone magenta with peacock blue and aureolan yellow. And then look, I just fell in love with this one, raw sienna. Payne's gray is technically a blue. And burnt sienna is conceivably a red, right? I mean, it is kind of red. Some artists do refer to that as a red, believe it or not. <laughs> it behaves as a red. If you think about it as a red for desaturating, it really will help you. 
Yeah. If you if you think about using that um, that burnt sienna with um, other greens, you can really get some. It looks really good when you mix it into a green. It really can look good. really good when you mix it into a certain, like if you're doing a portrait, burnt sienna can work really well for the lips. Have you ever tried mixing a lip color? Lips are hard. Lips, Lip color is very hard because it's basically the skin tone plus just a little more pigment. And usually like a burnt sienna, it's a red, but it's not a crazy red. Like if you're doing a man's lip, you really mm -hmm. don't look too red. So burnt sienna will really help. Things like that. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So I don't know. What do I want to do to that? Was there, was it, I don't think we had a photo reference for this, did we? Um, we didn't have an exact photo reference. I've actually done this piece in my store. So I think we were just, I was just using other pumpkins, you know, that I've seen. Yeah, I, want, I just want to look at a pumpkin stem. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull up Unsplash on my screen. And I'm going to be painting these pumpkin stems and leaves in tonight. And I don't know, if, if you get nothing else from me, what's the thing I say all the time? Yeah. <laughs> You know, we, oh, we talk about this all the time, and and our our poor members who hear us say, "But do you have a reference?" Yes. You know, have have a reference because even if you're doing something that you've done a hundred times before, get a reference and and look at um, analyze things analyze the size of the size of the stem to the size of the pumpkin the color in the stem the colors in the pumpkins um always 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 pull up a reference sometimes for me my reference is a past piece that i've done um but even if i'm using my art as a as a reference that original art came from a, an actual photo that i was you know, studying and looking at. So right. use a reference. It makes a huge difference. Um, I'm looking at a reference of a pumpkin stem right now. I mean, it's on Unsplash. I suppose I could share it, but it's so cool because um, have you ever really looked at a pumpkin stem? <laughs> They're so, they can be so intricate and yeah. gorgeous, you know? There's so much texture to them. They're so, they're very woody. This one is spotty. Oh. It's it's got yellow spots on it. Yeah. Sometimes they can have um yeah, the texture to them. That's interesting. There's it, it, it looks stripy and spotty, I swear. There's so many different um varieties of pumpkins. It's so fun to So fun to look at all of them yeah and you know observation is one of the things that is very important as a as an artist you know really noticing things and sometimes we really have to quiet our minds and get in the zone and um just absorb it all in and and you know let it come to you let you know what do you what do you notice I think we talk about um, developing the artist eye a lot, and it's it's that's another one of those things that sounds kind of like, oh, that's an artsy fartsy kind of thing to say, but yeah. um, once you start to really do that, when you start to really look at things, um, you'll find that your eye just does it almost automatically, just naturally. You begin to start to see, and it's one of the things that I think is a great Thing about being in a membership like the painter's journey it really gets you focused on seeing things and helps your art in so many different ways just focusing on your art can really begin to develop that eye to things yeah, for sure um you know when i was in art school I, I really didn't understand it at the time. Like, why do we have to sit here and draw this yeah. still life 
for a month. Are you kidding me? A month? <laughs> But you'd be surprised, you know, you, you can spend a month looking at the same, you know, thing and keep noticing new things about it. And by the end of the month, when you look back at the first thing that you did versus the thing that you painted at the end of the month, it's like, well, look at all of these things yeah, that I right. was beginning to see that I didn't, I didn't notice at first. Exactly. So part of um, more of a more advanced skill is, you know, actually um, more advanced uh, observation. And it, just, it, it is a skill. It takes time. Yeah. It's fun when you realize that you're you're getting there, though. No, it's, it's fun when you go, oh, look, look what I noticed about this thing that I wouldn't have, you know, maybe thought about before. It's a fun skill to have. For sure. So I don't know, I'm just kind of um, putting a few different, um, laying down a few different values in this stem here, and I'm going to do it for the other ones too. <clears throat> And I do need to find some leaves now. So I'm not even looking on StreamYard to see how we're looking here. Um, so we've got Liz and Lynn here. Are you guys um, thinking of buying some watercolor supplies or do you have any watercolor supplies? Are you ladies uh, into it? Have you, have you tried doing any watercolors? I'm just curious. I think Liz was wanting to get some. I know that Liz's husband likes to do art too, so it'd be fun to see what what he might want to do. That'd be interesting. Yeah, that'd be very cool. And he's another Mark, right? I think he's a Mark. Yeah, he is. I think His you're right. Mark. My hubby's name is Mark. Sometimes you can soften an edge. Um, so this is a previous layer that I painted and it just depends on if it's a staining pigment. And um, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of working on here. When you have good watercolor paper it's amazing the things that you can do it makes it you know if, if you're if you're working on on a cheaper paper that's completely fine but um whenever you can take the leap and get get a get a good 130 pound cotton paper and you'll be amazed at what you can do it does make a big difference I've been pulling a little bit of my pyrrole red into the green that I'm working with just again to, to tone it down and make it not quite so grass green. And trying to let other areas dry a little bit before I start. You know, it's, it's a little bit like cookie decorating, honestly. It's like um, oh, yeah. you know, I worked here, so now I need to go work on this other area so that I can let that, let that dry a little bit. You know, you just, you just have more control. You, you, you know, if you're having trouble with things bleeding and going where you don't want them to go, then just spend a little bit more time letting it dry a little bit. So Liz says that her husband has gone more into some charcoal drawing. Liz, I hope you'll share some of his things. I'd love to see in the group what he's doing. That's pretty fun. You can do so much with charcoal drawings. That is cool. I love the darkest darks and lightest lights of charcoals. 
Yeah. Really playing with the values. But don't make me want to do that. I'm too busy doing other stuff. <laughs> right. I can't do that right now. It's funny. got a little bit into my hooker's green there which is a little bit a little bit more of a kind of blue green just fine but if if you do that you just want to you just want to try to get that color in some other places so it doesn't stand out too much like a sore thumb oh was it too vibrant it was just a little too, it was a little bluer than, you know, I, I hadn't toned it as much, but that's fine. I'll just walk it around to some of these other places and add a little pop of color. And again, when it dries, it, it will have a, a different feel to it too. So sometimes those, oh, I'm not sure I like that <laughs> moments turn out to be the thing that you really like a lot i want to clear over here off off screen a little bit <laughs> oh who's that higgins is dreaming oh <laughs> oh no my camera went Sometimes the camera picks up the brush and has a hard time focusing. So I'm just kind of letting myself play around with this. My goal, what I have in mind is that I want to maybe refine without overdoing. That's my goal. Because I really liked the freshness that it has. <clears throat> and I think it's important to kind of have something in mind. We were talking about that today, too. Um, always know what you're doing and why you're doing it. <laughs> Sounds kind of basic, but you'd be surprised. A lot of times people are like, well, I don't know why I'm actually doing this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> felt right. Sometimes that's good enough. It just It just felt natural. It felt like the thing to do. My camera is just not wanting to behave tonight. There we go. That's a little better. We've talked about that too. It's nice to know what you're doing, but it's also nice to just pump up the music, you know, and, and just kind of get into the moment of it and not think too much. For sure. All right. I got to get some leaves painted here. You got at least three pumpkins painted. I've got one pumpkin and some leaves. Well, you banged out those leaves pretty quick there, Missy. Missy, I was playing with them before we came live. Just it's been a it's been a busy day. I've been going all day, so it was I was excited to come down and just pain a little bit. I'm so glad that uh, you're really enjoying it. Yeah, it's so fun. I don't know, we've talked about it before in these lives, but there's just something really freeing about watercolor. It's, it's so easy to set it up. It's Easy to put away, easy to clean up. Yeah. 
Wouldn't it be fun to do some watercolor workshops maybe? I feel like, well, I need to get good enough for that. <laughs> but you'd be surprised how quickly, you know. Yeah, well, I think that that's true in any painting that you do. And we've, I was talking with a, a member about that today. Even if you don't think that you're quite at the level to do a certain project, you'd be surprised at how quickly you can be ready with just a just a couple of you know paint for 30 days really think about art for 30 days and study and and you know it comes quicker than you think yeah you'll you'll really you'll really get there quicker than you than you believe We have a few people here. I, we were going to talk tonight about, we're thinking about mm -hmm. starting a um, Christmas watercolors for our next series that we're going to start for Tuesday Night Live. Does anybody have any Christmas watercolors you'd like to see? Any particular subject? Ivy, I think you, you had a couple of ideas. Did I? Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, um, there's so much we could do. I mean, gosh. Um, I'm not thinking of anything right now. I think somebody throw some ideas out. Somebody give somebody help. I think that we I think we talked about maybe some penguins. Oh yeah, I, I've got some tracers of penguins that I've shared in the membership that would be real real fun and easy to do. Yeah. Penguins. Um, um, you know, maybe just kind of cutesy stuff. I have a cute little dancing penguin I drew. Hi, Teresa. He's got like Teresa. one little one foot up off the ground. Oops, sorry. <laughs> ka -ching. Thank you so much, you guys. We've been getting so many orders. You guys are just oh, you guys are awesome. rocking it. That's actually a that's actually an Etsy order. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. We've I I was I was surprised because I heard the kaching and I was I was I don't wondering hear anything from my Square Up website. I wish I did. I was wondering what was what was selling. I wonder what sold on my Etsy store. I have to take a look. Just to go look. I knew it. I know. I would. I would want to go look too. I have to see what I need to be making. Oh, well, you know what occurred to me, and I don't honestly. It really hadn't totally occurred to me. But um, where was I at? I was somewhere the other day, and women are out shopping for fall de decorations. Uh huh. And it occurred to me, this is the time of year when er literally everybody goes and buys something to decorate. For yeah. Fall. I mean, everybody, whether it's an outdoor mom mm -hmm. out on your front porch, that's true, or a yeah. wreath on your door, or a candle, or maybe it's a piece of art. You know, everybody. I mean, don't you? Let's let's ask you guys. Have you bought anything? You know, to decorate your house with. I love or decorating for fall. Maybe you pulled out all your stuff. Maybe you already have a bunch of stuff and you pulled it out. This order is actually for a spring wood cutout. Would you oh, believe it? Well, there we Not go. <laughs> you know, yes, that is funny. I, you know, it just goes to show, and I talk about this in the Etsy class quite a bit. Um, that's why I don't take my my pieces down. Um, everything that I offer, I offer all year because of sales, sales like that. Stuff yeah. sells all year, yeah. You wouldn't think so. I've had the same thing on my website. Yeah. It's really funny. Well, people, and that's why it's great to talk to other artists about this, because you really, yeah. how would you even know if you didn't talk to another artist about it? Definitely. You know? People find the thing that they fall in love with and they don't want to miss the opportunity to get it. So, I mean, that's another great thing about being a artist people who are buying that artwork understand that um, what I'm seeing today might not be available tomorrow. And as we are 
marketing our pieces, we should, you know, be reminding folks of that. It, you know, this is a handmade um, special piece. So grab it while you can. This is what I was talking about with this, with the fine point of this brush. Even on this tiny part of this top stem, I can get just a couple of hairs of that, the tip of that brush, and it's just amazing. Teresa says it's still too hot there to purchase anything for fall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, well we're in the Midwest. Sorry, guys. It's very different for us. Charlie, no. No, 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 Charlie. Oh. So it was actually like... I think this morning it was a little bit warmer, like 70 degrees here first thing. It got up to 90. Yesterday morning, I think that oh, it was God. it was 53 when I woke up. So it's just it's so it's so bizarre. We've had like 40 degree temperature shifts. You don't you don't know what to put on in the morning because it Yeah, it, same here. I mean it's not well, maybe it's not that extreme, but all right, I think I am going to put another layer of color on on this pumpkin after all. So since we've got you here, we thought we would just mention a few of the things that we've got going on. In case you didn't know, um, we have our, let's see, tomorrow night, I want to I want to talk about using um, like we're going to talk a little bit about mantle decor and tabletop decor and creating art for your customers around that theme. Have you ever really thought about that, you guys? I know yes. Shelly has. I, I have. And, and in my Etsy store, I market that type of art quite a bit because it is so popular. So many people are looking for... Um, small art and it's, it's and i think they're looking for it for their for um oh what is that thing called that i bought that tray oh the tiered tray tiered tray thank you yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it was so much it was hard i you know i bought a tiered tray that's what i want to talk about tomorrow i'm going to show you my tiered tray um as an artist you know, it's a business write-off to buy one, but it's such a great idea for showcasing your small pieces of art and using that as a prop in your in your photography when you're doing your social media posts. Like, why didn't I think of this before? It's so, so popular. And I was talking with Aggie about it yesterday. It's um, my oldest daughter is really into the tier tray decor. Yeah. So it's it's kind of um, ageless. You just it's still it's so popular. Does she always have to have something on her her tiered tray? She just yeah she loves it and and it, she's very artistic in her own right. So she likes making stuff for her tiered tray. So yeah she her kids are involved. My grandbabies are involved in sports. So she you know she often it's often. Um, themed around sports and oh, stuff like okay. that. Very cool. Like it's it's football season in the schools. So huh. It just opens up a whole new world of stuff. Oh, I like what that did. That really added a lot. I put more depth on the bottom of this one. I was looking at my paper of the blue one. Yeah. This yeah, one. That, yeah, that looks so pretty. So sometimes you just don't realize that it needs a little bit more. It's already 40. What should I do? What should I do? I think I'm going to do a bluish pumpkin over here. Yes. Hmm. 
My husband is at a Royals game this evening, so. Or the Royals. They are, uh, <laughs> shame on you, Aggie, for not knowing who the Royals are. I'm, I'm not a sports person at I'm all. Just kidding you, just teasing. The Royals are a baseball team, Kansas City baseball team. Okay. Professional? Yes. Okay. I did not know that. So they're like the Cubs? Yeah. Okay. American League. Um, I don't know what league. I'm not enough of a, of a fan to know what league they're in, but yeah. yeah. No, I don't. I don't know either, really, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I no, just I, was, I was teasing. I was teasing. I know so little about sports. I'm bad. I was teasing you. I am bad at that stuff. So I actually had a little bit of green left in my brush from doing the leaves and I kind of like how that looks. You discovered a like a happy accident, huh? I did. It was it's kind of you know, it's 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 that that's another one of the just the really fun things about watercolor. You can just kind of let try to be free, try to let stuff happen. And the members who um <laughs> who know me know that I, I'm I have a hard time sometimes being just free and letting stuff happen. So <laughs> It's cool when you just. That's why I think watercolor is, it's like a good therapy. It really is. Uh, okay. So Teresa says, I've not put up anything or purchased anything for fall. Too hot here still. They are very popular. Yeah. Well, yeah, I bought the tiered tray and I started playing around with it. And oh my goodness, it was so much fun. Um, and my little pumpkins fit really nicely in there. I had it all arranged. And then I get this message from um, a friend of mine that I've known my whole life since I was a young girl. Do you still have the beachy blue and the icy blue four by four inch pumpkin? <laughs> She's buying those. So I took those off the tray. But I do want to talk about that tomorrow night. Um, so that we have that coming up tomorrow night. We're going to be doing that. I don't know where Shelly live here on YouTube. Yeah, sure. Or, um, and then some other things that we have going on, we've got our um, exciting Red Barn workshop coming up. Um, you can still buy the journey box for that. We're calling that, a, it's a journey box. And what that means is that there is a cutout, a wood cutout kit that goes with the workshop. So it's a five day workshop that we're gonna be doing over uh, in a private Facebook group. And, um, each day we're going to send you another lesson and then the next day we'll go live at one o'clock and go over any questions that you might have, teach you some bonus lessons, give away some prizes. And by the end of the week, you will create this gorgeous, let me get the PDF. It includes the PDF workbook with supply lists and, and you know, everything. So this is the, um, what the tracer looks, I mean, not the tracer. This is what the PDF yeah. uh, workbook, you know, looks like. It's got the link to the classroom, the link to the YouTube playlist. So we did do this class in the membership. It's already pre-recorded, but we're basically going through the entire class again um, with, with this updated journey box. We kind of updated the design of the barn. Mm -hmm. And we are also offering it in a 16 by 20 size. So you can choose eight by 10 or 16 by 20. So here's like the supply list. I'll kind of quickly show you some of this stuff. Um, you know, how to get started on the painting. This is the actual, this is it painted without any glass added to it yet. So it's a mixed media piece. And if you've never done, you know, glass and resin on top of an acrylic painting, this would be the perfect intro for you because it's only $49.95, including the, you know, with the wood mm -hmm. cut up. You are going to need to get yourself the resin and these, you know, the, the glass. We use a vase filler. You might want to get a couple alcohol inks. 
if you if you do want to have cut glass on the evergreen trees in front of the barn you're going to need a pair of nippers and we will we will tell you where to get all that stuff and go over all of that with you and then at the end we're going to offer you um, if you want to join the membership um, it'll be the last time you can join because we are going to be raising the price of the membership uh, we've had this at $37 for, I don't know, four years now. And um, with over 200 lessons plus Procreate and Etsy classes, it's well worth the value that you're getting. So you can join either monthly at 37 a month now through October 22nd. So it's going up on the 22nd. Um, or if you want to do the annual plan, that's that's an even better value because it's 370, two months free. 370 for the entire year. And um, this will be the last time it's offered at that price. Yes, grab it while you can. This the membership is such an amazing gift to yourself. You will advance your art skills so, so quickly. Just being in a, a community of ladies like we have that are so supportive and so helpful um you'll be astounded at how quickly your art skills will will elevate just just from just from being with with people who love the same things that you love so yeah i mean i was just talking with a lady today that that came by she was interested in seeing that glistening pines piece. And she's like, I am just so captivated by what you're doing. This, this art is, you know, and, and here I'm seeing that you teach people how to do it. Can I really do this? I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you really can. Yeah. <laughs> we yes. really show you everything and you'd be amazed at what you can do. I mean, we've got people that are brand new to this that are, that are turning out absolutely <laughs> gorgeous pieces of art, you know, yeah, we were just talking about that the other day. Members who are in the, the membership, even at the $47 price, my smallest pieces, my five by six pieces, sell for that much. So if you did one five by six piece that you sold every month, you would pay for the membership. Right. And you would definitely sell, you know, more than that. And, uh, you know, that we have a lot of members who really aren't interested in selling and and that's fine oh yeah you don't right of course it's whatever it's wherever you're at in your journey we just want to you know bring bring the joy of creating having your own little art business maybe you're semi-retired and you'd like to make a little bit of income i'm telling you this gets your art noticed the glass and resin the sparkle Everybody loves it. And you have permission to, you know, essentially copy the art that you yeah. learn in our classes and sell it. Well, that's you know, we, even, we even help you with, you know, how to, you know, how to post more on social media and things like that. Yeah. Because you do need to build an audience. It really is. Um, if you really are interested in selling, if you really are serious about being a selling artist, you really do have to put in the time. It's not an overnight thing, but um, everyone starts somewhere. So jump in, get started, make yourself a business page, start start working towards selling your art. Start now. There's why why wait? <laughs> you know, start yeah, now. honestly with social media. You you know. Like even today, I, I just noticed that um, with the messenger chat, you can leave a note. It's another opportunity to market something, you know. I actually so, went in and put a note on mine today. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen it before. So many ways you can market yourself. Just let people know, hey, I made this. Let me know if you want to buy it, if you like this. And we've got members selling stuff left and right, you yeah. know. Yep. Or sometimes, you know, a lot of members are giving their art to their loved ones and it's, you know, they're very proud of it. And they had a lot of fun when they were making it, you know. It's a great legacy to leave to your grandchildren, a great thing to give them. They have a little piece of, of you, something that you created. So I love that too. We have a lot of 
a lot of members who make things as gifts for their grandchildren, either older grandchildren getting married or grandchildren having birthdays. It's real fun. And we all share the pieces. The messenger group is a, is a great place to share and get a little bit of feedback from other members. Um, you know, if you're, if you're just not loving a piece and you wonder what you're missing, post a picture and there's always someone there to help you. It's just a, it's just an amazing, amazing community of women who really are so giving of their, their talents. It's, it's incredible. It's, one, it's my favorite place to hang out. I just like yeah. to hang out there with my, it, with it really my is, I mean, I just, and that's what I was telling Valerie that, that was here tonight, you know, when she picked up the glistening pines piece, you know, she, she said she discovered acrylic painting and she absolutely loves it. And, you know, now she's ready to do more. And she was asking about the membership and she's like, well, could I really do this? And I'm like, you know, you really can. And, and mm -hmm. when you, Around other artists, it's so so helpful. <laughs> yep. I mean, even the simplest little thing like, where can I go buy this? Does anybody know about that? You know. Mm -hmm. Well, and the little boost of confidence, like what she was saying, can I really do this? It is invaluable to have a friend there who's saying, yes, you're almost there. Yeah, it really you're, is. You're you're so close. Keep going. Don't give up. And um, I've needed that a lot. Well, we all do. I do. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you've done art all of your life or if you've done art for three days. It yeah. is amazing to have people there say, yeah, you're close, do this or try this or what do you think about this? Right. Um, it's, it's, you're, you're never alone. And we, we talk about that quite a bit in the lives too, how lonely art can be sometimes but um you know with the chat with the membership you're you're never alone so join us <laughs> join us now before anyway, we yeah i mean and i know we we're, we talk about it a lot but you know that's part of why we're doing what we're doing we really don't want you to miss out so <clears throat> And to be really honest and truly transparent, um, this is what this is what you do as an artist. You you learn how to get comfortable talking about what you have to offer to your customers. If you can do that, if you can show up and just share what you've got, um, you're going to build relationships with people, and um, they're going to want to buy from you as they get to know you and hear about all the great things that you've got to offer. It may not happen right away. Right. It does happen. I have seen it happen in my business and now I'm teaching, you know, the members how to do it and they're seeing it happen in, in their lives too. Definitely. You know, so. Really is a matter of being persistent and not giving up. Yeah. And we talk a lot about um, you know, being proud of the investment you're making in yourself. Um, you know, yeah. one of the things that we um, one of the things that we talk about um, a lot is um, elevating your art. You know, come come into the membership where we're sharing with you pieces that we've um, designed to be ready to sell. We know that we know that they're going to be there. We know we're, they're going to be showstoppers, but you're learning along that, along the way to develop those things too. We have a lot of members who, um, you know, are, are amazing. They've built their skills. They're doing some of their own paintings too. And it's just, it's, Invest in yourself, invest in your art and really, um, you really expand your, your horizons with what you're doing. You'll never, um, in the membership, you'll never wonder what you should do next because, you know, there's so, there's a, a vault of so many classes that um, you'll, you'll never be uninspired. 
And, you know, there's no shame in, um, in sharing that you're taking classes. I think oh, almost yeah. it's a taboo thing or something, but when you, when you share with people that you are investing, you're sharing that you're worthy of the investment, you know, that you're mm -hmm. dedicated to your art, that you're a serious artist. You want to portray that to your, to your, your followers. Absolutely. You know? So I don't know. I think a lot of artists don't necessarily share that. Yeah. <laughs> I, get well, I do. I get it. I think if you think of it in the, in the terms of, you know, say a doctor, they, they can, they have to continue to do their studying to stay up on the latest things. We have to do that too. As artists, we have to be aware of, you know, what's, what's popular and what's out there. And I think our, our customers would be happy to know that we're, we're doing that work. Yeah. Well, and, and you can share your journey as you are growing. Mm. Um, you know, there's so many YouTubers out there that people can now participate in the journey of what that YouTube creator is doing. There's so many, there's so much fandom going on. That's a new word, fandom. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, people love being fans of creators and the creators are pretty transparent and sharing all the stuff that they're doing. And it's just a fun adventure to watch as their business grows and explodes and all of that, you know? Well, I think that it, on the social media, people are enjoying hearing your story. What brought you to art? Why are you doing this? What's the, you know, do you, do you do it because you, you want the relaxation of doing art or, you know, they, they're just, there's a, and again, I don't know her name, but I follow her on TikTok and she's, she does some fairly simple, you know, easy to grasp things, but she has an amazing following and. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. She was a teacher I'm or maybe sure. she still is. Yeah. But she yeah. uses it for, she, she has some. Um, anxiety disorders. Yeah, she uses it for for that. That was what really you know got her into art, and um, yeah. So she, there are a lot of people who feel the same way and who love to go in and just kind of zen out with with her. You know, just yeah. relax with the watercolor or the you know whatever kind of painting that you're doing. I miss it. I get, if I, if I get busy and I don't have time to paint, I like, I itch to get back to it. Yeah, that's good. I do too. It's funny when I hear it ding on your side and my side. Oh, I didn't hear it on my side. Oh. I think that was just you or maybe someone else. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. One of the people who took the um, Autumn Glow journey box was asking for my email address. What happened? Um, one of the one of the ladies who took the Autumn Glow. Yeah. Just asking for my email address. Oh, oh okay. So I don't know what she wants to send me, but. been fun to see people creating in that group too that was the first journey box that we had oh my goodness and yeah somebody just shared one today that turned out so nice yeah oh um the uh that lady crazy glass lady that we we sent her a sample linda berman yeah i have to ask her if she did a video i'm sure she did i don't know when that'll be coming out yeah she did a, she did a an amazing job yeah hi linda if you're watching hey linda i'm so happy that she went into the group and shared her finished piece it's fun yeah, to that was nice. and it, it's been fun to see across the um all of the pieces that have been made even from 
you know, everyone is taking the same, the, the same workshop, everyone has the same cutouts, but still every piece looks it's different. Yeah. Different. Every piece has its own individual look and it's so fun to see. So if you don't know about our journey boxes, you can go to www.thepaintersjourney.com and just click on the journey box link. Right now we have two, it's a pretty new thing that we're offering. Um, but you can go there and kind of read more about those if you want to. So much cool stuff. We are having a blast. It's so fun. Right now, the, the laser is busy, busy, busy with the newest class, which is the Santa's Visit class. So lots of those going out to our friends who want to make those. All right. I don't know. What do you think? I went back in and did I painted over. I made it all richer colors. I like it. <clears throat> beautiful i was going to leave it but see that's what i do <laughs> i think that that's that's the hard thing one of the, i think maybe the hardest thing about being an artist is when leave do i up. stop yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it good like this or do i i just you know and you just kind of have to you just have to kind of follow your follow your instincts and once you once you make the commitment just go for it <laughs> you know it's it'll be it'll be beautiful just go i feel like i didn't like the stem being yeah i think that helped it i brought my stem out beyond the pumpkin oh yeah of course i made it very very dark but Make that all blend in together somehow. I know Marsha has done a couple of the pumpkin pieces. Has anybody else tried the pumpkins? We'd love to, to see them if you. Oh, yeah. If you've done any, we would oh, love who to. Who is this community them. page here on YouTube? I don't know if people know about that, but you can, um, I think you can share stuff on the community page. I don't know. I don't know either. I've never, we need to look into that. Um, and what else do we want to talk about? Um, okay. So we told you about tomorrow night. We're gonna do, we're just gonna talk about what kind of art you might make. If you're an artist or a maker and you're like, okay, Christmas is coming and I don't really know what I should be working on. I, I saw a little bit of that going on. Like, do you know what you're gonna be creating this this Christmas for your, are you doing any shows? Do you, do you need ideas? Um, we've got a lot of, you know, classes that are Christmas themed that we've done in the past that you can pull from. Um, somebody mentioned um, vintage ornaments and like, oh yeah, I have a vintage ornament class. Oh, Here you yeah. go. In there. <laughs> well, and for those, you know, I, I'm having a hard time thinking about summer being over, but um, now is the time for us to really be promoting those Christmas and um you know, even that the Halloween stuff is still is still popular, but um, it will quickly. You know, we're already mid through September. People are going to really start to really transition into into Christmas. And I don't know what everybody else sees. Mm -hmm. For me, I see people go often straight from um, Halloween to Christmas, and almost kind yeah. of skip over fall. Yeah. Um, skip over Thanksgiving. So um, if you're a seller selling either on your own stores or going to shows, get those Christmas things. 
Um, well, you got to start thinking about what you're going to order to create your Christmas mm -hmm. art. You need to order it now. Remember how scary it was when we were during COVID? Yeah. Like, oh gosh. Like you couldn't even get all the substrates you wanted. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, you don't worry about substrates because you make your own, but I, make my own. I was very worried about that at the time because you couldn't get everything, you know, Yeah. it was terrible. Well, and it's always kind of, you know, it, that could happen again at, at any point where you just, you know, have a hard time finding one thing or another. So really yeah, that's a good idea to find that out. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that a little bit and um, I might take another pumpkin here. Although we're almost, we're probably going to sign off pretty soon. I don't pretty know. Pretty soon. I got another maybe 10 minutes or so. before. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to start another one then. I'm on my own, so I've got to. <laughs> I'll put my camera back over here and just talk. My my chickens are out. You got to get the chickens back in. Got to get the chickens safe. <laughs> um. So yeah, the other thing is joining the membership. And when I was telling Valerie about it, so Valerie is a you know a new customer, hopefully a new collector. She just was raving about everything she saw here in my studio it was it's like okay thank you so so much she was so <laughs> sweet um and i mean it was good for me to see firsthand to speak to someone firsthand about it because she's like okay but will i know what supplies to get and do i have to have the supplies mm -hmm. for the class i'm like no you don't even have to have the supplies for the class you can just watch the class all the way through see you know see if it even turned out the way you like and if that's the project you want to do there's you know hundreds of classes literally to choose from and you know decide which class you want to do half, half the battle is figuring out what class you want to start with right and then buy the supplies for that and the initial investment i would say i i have polled the members and asked them if i if you had to guess how much money it is to buy all the basic glass and resin equipment, like the nippers and, you know, the stuff to cut the glass, the stuff to, you know, the resin and mixing the resin, the cups and all that stuff. How much would you guess it is? And I'm like, do you think it's like a hundred dollars, $200? You know, it's probably more like $200. Now, of course, if you, if you buy, a gallon, the gallon of resin, at, you know, that's a lot more money than a 16 ounce um, bottle of resin, right? So it depends on how much resin you're buying too. But, you know, we go over that too. We give tips on what you should buy and um, we're always there for questions. That's the great thing about the group. If you're looking at, a, at the website for which resin do I buy and how much do I buy, come in and ask. Yeah, um, we, we can save you money and tell you what not to buy. You know, exactly. exactly. And where to get stuff. There's, there's certain places you can go for certain things that will really save you a lot of money, <laughs> you know? Um, but I don't think she, I don't, she, she's like, so, so I get to pick one class a month and it's 37 a month. I'm like, you can do all the classes. There's, there's over 200 classes. I, I mean, I haven't counted lately. I don't even know how many. Like, no, 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 it's not just one class. You can do any class you want <laughs> for, for the 37 a month. She's like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You have everything. Yeah. It's such an incredible deal. I don't think people get it because it probably sounds too good to be true or something. I don't know. But anyway. We just, we put it all out there. We talk a lot in the membership about um, even if, there is a piece. Um, recently, I did the large mouth bass piece. Maybe you don't care at all about large mouth bass. But right. if you watch that class, you will learn something about painting. You will learn something about glass. You will learn something about substrates. You'll learn exactly. something about resin. So, um, you know, often times when I'm sitting with my husband in the living room watching football or whatever, I'll have my AirPods in watching a class because there's always something to learn. And yeah. I try to keep up on all the classes so I can help all the members too. Right. So. 
and you know, like we're focusing on all these different things, you know, at the very least, you're going to learn, you know, you're going to hear us talking and it, it becomes a way of thinking and it starts after you hear it a few times, it starts to ring true and make sense in the decisions that you make, you know, basic observation, drawing simple shapes, looking at shapes, drawing shapes and creating form. When she talked about the fish, she actually showed you how to make it look rounded and have that depth. And it's not a magic thing. Anybody can learn to do it. It's just a matter of understanding how to do it and what steps you need to take to make it look like it's got form to it, you know? And it just takes doing it. A lot of times we, um, we don't really sit down and actually just practice it. Just try it. You have to do it, you know? Well, we talk it about with watching starts with, starts yeah. with watching, taking it in and, and start to under, start to think like an artist and start to really observe how light hits something and, and what color is that? I mean, sometimes people don't even have a color vocabulary, uh, you know, don't even, you, at first you won't even see colors. You won't see all the colors that I've trained my eye to see. I've been looking for colors, you know, my whole life. And I, and I just see them because I, I don't know, because I've, Sometimes I just imagine them in there, I think is what it is, because yeah. I know what will look good next to something. But yeah. if you really, you know, have it in the right light and print it out on your printer, maybe your printer has a little less magenta ink in it today. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's, you know, you just start to feel more confident and going, you know what? I, I know it's a yellow flower, but I want to add a little purple over here. You know, mm -hmm. I see, see, I think I see purple, you know? <laughs> And you go through that a lot in, in a lot of your classes, you like really dive into what the reference picture is, what you see in different parts, kind of break it down. We use Procreate a lot and show how artists can break down those colors and really study. Even if you don't use Procreate to make full digital pieces, um, I do. I sell my digital art a lot. <laughs> Hi Higgins. Um, it's funny they come in. They know the about the amount of time. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, and especially him because he's like, "Uh, it's mom. It's dinner time. It's, it's been about an hour, mom. I'm I'm really hungry. It's been over an hour, actually, mom. It's so funny. I was telling Aggie, I I um, any time that it's time to teach a class, I will I'll tell the boys upstairs. Okay, let's go teach a class. And they'll like go running down the steps and come to the studio. They're like, okay, I know it's time to teach a class. <laughs> Higgy. Hi, Higgy. Uh oh. Charlie looked jealous. Charlie's <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? Uh oh. Yeah. Charlie's jealous. Within the membership, you also get the Procreate lessons. So they're, like, hey, hey, Charlie. <laughs> so we hope you'll join us. If you have any questions at all, please post them here. Um, we're ha we'll, we'll get a notice if you post anything here. So post to us. We'll, yeah. We're happy to, to answer it. Visit thepaintersjourney.com. There's lots of information there. But um, October 22 is the day that the prices go up. $47 for the monthly starting October 22nd. $470 for the year starting that date. Until then, it's $37 a month or $370 a year. So you sign up. It is a recurring, it's a subscription. So yeah. whatever day you sign up on every, about every 30 days would be when it would um, bill you again. He's just so, he's so extra. It's like, you, you have If I'm like this on my table, he comes up and the nose comes through my armpit, you know. You've, like, seen, what, you've seen what Higgins does. I get the like, yeah. 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 Well, this is around like I usually walk him. It's 7:15 here. I usually walk him. She says love the puppies. Aww. Um in about an hour. So, he yeah. knows it's almost time. And he's like, "Is it time yet, Mommy? Let's mm -hmm. go. Let's do this. Let's do the thing." So, next week, Tuesday night live, we're going to be doing um something Christmassy. I'm a little bit hot. Uh -huh. Let's see, what should we do? 
Um, Liz, Teresa, what do you guys want to see us do? And there's someone else here too. Who's the third person? Oh, Lynn. Lynn, are you still here? I kind Lynn. of want to do some small-ish, ornament-ish type pieces. I think some small... Well, you know, we're going to be doing what's coming up in the membership. We're going to be doing a whole nutcracker theme. That's what I was thinking we would do for the watercolors. That'd be fun. You know, just what's some of the fun icons that go with the nutcracker theme. I know there was a mouse. There was a mouse that wore a crown. We could do, you know. Yeah. I think that, you know, maybe a swan, maybe a, a ballerina. How about a Christmas ballerina? Is there such a thing? Yeah. Um, we could even paint a little watercolor nutcracker. I think the nutcracker needs to be big. I like the big nutcrackers. But, I mean, we could still do them in watercolor, though, as practice. Yeah. yeah. And figure, figuring out our colors on the big one. There's so many different outfits that you can put on nutcrackers. I love it. The vintage, oh, we could do the vintage ornaments in watercolor. <gasps> That's a great idea, Liz. Even the 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 poinsettia or the cardinal would be beautiful for a little ornament shape. Oh yeah. We got to do some cardinals. Yeah. That's and we've been idea. talking a lot about the members are talking a lot about the woodland creatures, the fox and the bear and the moose and the, all, all of those things are pretty popular. Well, right now. Now in Christmas, we will have plenty of time to do all those things, you know, we'll do lots of fun things. Yeah. I'm going to do penguins. I, I have a cute, a cute snowman too. A snowman would be fun to do on a little watercolor, kind of yeah. a fun, a fun the background to keep yeah. the snowman white, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, be cute. All right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We love um, doing these with you, and um, we'll see you next week. And we'll also be back on tomorrow talking about tabletop and mantle art that you might make. Be sure to grab those tracers. They're going away. Get get the get the tracers from this watercolor pumpkin setting set because they're gonna we're gonna take them down. So all right. Thanks, friends. Bye.